Undertale. That name has stuck out amongst the gaming community for many years now. It was a viral success when it first released in 2015, garnering a massive fanbase and becoming a phenomenon. It's easily one of the most popular indie games ever made. Personally, I think Undertale is one of my favorite games of all time. It came out at the perfect time for me, being a young, dumb teenager and all, and it honestly got me through some hard times. The same can probably be said for a lot of people, as the game just has a very feel-good atmosphere surrounding it. Die-hard fans of Undertale know a lot about the game and its secrets, like me. However, there is much more to this one simple game than you would think. My name is Chatter, and this is the Undertale Iceberg. Now, before I get into this video, I have to clarify that this isn't the first time a video about this topic has been made before, but I feel this particular iceberg has so much more unique information that I feel like this video's existence is warranted. And as we go on, I'll give credit to certain videos or channels that help me discover more information about particular subjects in the iceberg. Look in the description to see everyone I've credited. This particular iceberg was found on the Iceberg Charts subreddit, and was made by the user Cheese Seatbelt. Great iceberg, man. Now let's not waste any more time. Let's dive into this. Toby Fox. Toby Fox is the creator of Undertale. He coded, sprited, composed, and wrote for most of the game, and has contributed to other projects before and after Undertale's release, including Pokemon Sword and Shield. Temi Chang Temi Chang was the co-creator for Undertale, and she helped design a lot of characters and animated some of the game. A species in the game is based on her, Temi! Earthbound Inspiration It's quite obvious that Undertale is inspired by Earthbound in multiple ways, from its dialogue to some of its visual style. There are also references to it littered throughout the game. Sans Me Costume In Banjo-Kazooie's Smash Ultimate gameplay presentation, Sans was revealed as a costume for the Me Gunner character, which absolutely broke the internet. Alongside this, a remix for Megalovania was included, composed by Toby Fox himself. And it's a fucking banger! Alternate Universes Undertale's fandom is known for creating multiple alternate universes, or AUs. The AUs themselves can switch up the game's plot, characters, gameplay, etc. Some of these AUs have even been made in the games, but most are incomplete. I say the reason why AUs are so prevalent in the game's fandom is due to the fact the game itself is about timelines and different paths. This leads me up to... Underswap. Underswap is an AU that swaps the roles of characters in the game to have different personalities, with Sans acting more like Papyrus and vice versa. This is easily the most popular AU, and has generated tons of fan art and fan content. Fanbase Undertale is known for having a massive young fanbase. And with massive young fanbases comes controversy, and people looking upon the whole fandom in a negative light. This negative stigma has died down over the past couple years, thankfully. Cringe culture's dead, bitch! Deltarune Deltarune is an Undertale spin-off created by Toby Fox. The game follows a new cast of characters, but seemingly takes place in a different world than Undertale. So far, only a demo featuring Chapter 1 has come out. This spin-off will be brought up time and time again within the iceberg. Sans is Ness. <sighs> In 2016, YouTuber Matt Pat released a game theory video about Undertale, trying to explain that the character Sans is a deceased version of Ness. The theory is very reaching and makes little to no sense within the context of the game. This video got a lot of attention when it first came out, but quickly spiraled into meme status for its absurdity. And don't even get me started on I Gifted the Pope Undertale. WD Gaster. Oh boy. Gaster is a hidden character within Undertale, who can only really be seen through hacking the game or getting incredibly lucky. While we do know what happened to him, the details have been left very vague as to who he is and what he was doing before his death. The most we know about him that we can definitively say is that he was the royal scientist before Alphys, and he created the core. One day, I quote, his experiments went wrong, he fell into his creation, and shattered throughout time and space. 
and that's it, really. This character is purely a mystery, and will be mentioned throughout the rest of the iceberg for a very good reason. Including the next entry, Gaster Followers. The Gaster Followers, much like Gaster himself, are hidden characters with an undertale. Their appearances are dull and gray, and the characters briefly mention Gaster's backstory before disappearing. Not much is known about these followers other than their living counterparts, one of them being from Deltarune. Entry number 17. There is an inaccessible room with an undertale named Room 264, which displays text in the Wingdings font, which is linked to Gaster. I'll read it for you now. Entry number 17. Dark, darker, yet darker. The darkness keeps growing. The shadows cutting deeper. Photon readings negative. This next experiment seems very, very interesting. What do you two think? After the text disappears, the game closes. It's interesting to note that the True Lab had 16 entries that you could read, and this is possibly the 17th, but I'll discuss that later. And speaking of, this entry is very important to know of for topics later on, so keep this in mind. Sans's Lab After you get into Sans's room, you can obtain a silver key, which opens a door behind Sans at Papyrus's house. The room has a covered up machine in the corner, blueprints with unreadable symbols, a drawer with a badge, and another drawer which piques the most interest. The drawer originally contained an image of Sans and, quote, other people you don't recognize, unquote. However, in the version 1.001 patch, you can find another photo, which is described as three people smiling and the words, don't forget. This has been linked to Deltarune, as Don't Forget is the title of the song in the credits, and the three people could potentially be Chris, Susie, and Ralzai. Genocide Differences The genocide route is easily the most different route in Undertale, as the game story shifts dramatically due to your actions. There are almost too many differences to name, but the most prominent include the new songs, and the new boss fights against Undyne the Undying, and Saints. ABC underscore 123 underscore A dot O G G. Due to its namesake, this is one of the first files you'll see when decompiling the game. I'll play it for you now. Hello, have some respect and don't spoil the game. It's impossible to have mysteries nowadays. Because of nosy people like you. Please keep all of this between us. If you post it online, I won't make any more secrets. No one will be impressed. It will be your fault. <laughs> In version 1.001, this audio was simply changed to be laughing. Probably because everyone knows the nooks and crannies of this game by now. Legendary Artifact. In Waterfall, there's a room with a piano. By playing the first few notes to memory, a hidden doorway opens up. Entering this doorway reveals a room with a red artifact. Attempting to pick up this artifact has the game state, You're carrying too many dogs. The annoying dog appears in your inventory, and if you try to drop it, the annoying dog will absorb the artifact and leave the player's inventory full of dog residue. Interacting with the empty place the artifact once was will read, the artifact is gone. A funny tidbit is that if the player tries to remove the annoying dog from their inventory through hacking and then tries to interact with the artifact, the game will tell you, this will never happen. You're a cunt, Toby. And I love you. Motifs. Undertale is known for utilizing motifs, or a repeating theme in a composition, throughout most of its soundtrack. Multiple videos have been made that link seemingly unrelated songs together by reuse motifs. This has led to people to joke that Toby Fox only wrote a small amount of songs, and then the majority of the soundtrack is simply reusing those songs. Quiche in a secret area in Waterfall, there's a bench, and checking the bench reveals that a quiche is hidden underneath it. 
The item is named Abandoned Quiche. It heals 34 HP. In a now deleted tweet, Toby said he originally implemented a feature that would allow you to skip parts of the game with this quiche. Kickstarter On June 24th, 2013, a Kickstarter for Undertale was initiated. Like all other Kickstarters, multiple donation tiers had prizes, which was all explained in a video featuring Sansa Papyrus, which includes some unique poses for the two not found within the final game. Those who donated over $100 got to include a fan character of the backers choosing into the game, one of them being Muffet. The $1,000 tier stated that the backers fan troll would become canon to Undertale. This was intended as a joke tier, but someone actually donated to it. We'll get back to that in a bit. The original goal was $5,000, but it was blasted out the water and got funded $51,125, reaching all of its intended stretch goals. So sorry. By walking over magical glass on the second floor of Hotland, you can encounter a hidden room. In the room is a sign that says, Art Club, meet here, next meeting October 10th, 8pm. If the player's clock is set to this time, reading the sign triggers So Sorry to appear, initiating a unique boss fight. What's interesting about So Sorry is that he was a fan character added within the game thanks to the Kickstarter. Remember that fan troll? Yeah, this was him. Instead of a fan troll, this is a fursona. Tread lightly when researching him, as this character was originally intended as a fat fetish character. Yeah. This character was put under controversy for this fact alone, but if you don't actively look for it, So Sorry basically has no connection to the original furry OC he's based on and isn't really fetishized in any way. 5th Anniversary Concert For Undertale's 5th Anniversary, a digital recording of a concert by Music Engine was streamed to YouTube. The concert performed the entirety of Undertale's soundtrack, and it's a really good listen. It honestly made me really nostalgic and emotional. The fact this even happened at all is dope as hell. And that's the first layer. Most of this information you probably already knew about, but that was only a warm-up. This is only the tip of the iceberg. Let's dive underneath the surface, shall we? Hard Mode by naming yourself Frisk at the start of the game, the game tells you, Warning, this name will make your life hell. Proceed anyway? By proceeding, you begin Hard Mode, which includes harder versions of enemies and gives you less useful items, like a snail pie, which heals less than the butterscotch pie. Unfortunately, the game only progresses to the end of the ruins, where Toriel's fight is interrupted by the annoying dog. The game then proudly states, Hard Mode. Coming. Maybe. Eh, don't count on it. This has led most to believe that hard mode won't happen, and this is uh, held true so far, as no updates to hard mode have come out at all. Chara is the narrator. A lot of evidence within the game suggests that Chara is the one that narrates Undertale. A lot of the narrator's flavor text is written like a character reacting to the events that are unfolding in front of you. The narrator also has their flavor text changed within Genocide, such as the famous line, despite everything, it's just you, turning into, it's me, Chara. There's a great Tumblr post that has piles of evidence to back this up, to the point I'd say it's a fact. Link in the description. The Anomaly Within Sansa's fight, Sans explains to you that a certain anomaly is creating timelines left and right, and they're starting and stopping suddenly. He then goes on to say, that's your fault, isn't it? Quite obviously, the anomaly is referring to the player, as Frisk is the one controlled by the player, and the player is the one who starts and stops multiple timelines or new playthroughs. Fun values. Before the game starts, a random number between 1 and 100 is chosen, referred to as a fun value. Depending on your fun value, certain events can happen, like the wrong number song event. The most important of these events, though, are the ones involving Gaster and his followers, with fun value 66 triggering Gaster's room, or the Mystery Man room. Goner Kid. Goner Kid is a character found in Waterfall if you have a fun value of 90 or above. They have many key differences that make people question if Goner Kid is even related to Gaster. The most important difference of these being, Goner Kid doesn't mention Gaster at all. Goner Kid's dialogue proceeds as follows. Have you ever thought about a world where everything is exactly the same? Except you don't exist. Everything functions perfectly without you. Ha. 
<laughs> the thought terrifies me. People are unsure who this character is, but a possible explanation is that this is a sibling, a monster kid, who fell into the core and got erased from existence, explained in their dialogue. Waiting for Toriel. After Toriel gives you a cell phone, she asks you to wait for her as she does errands. Most players start moving immediately after and go explore, but if you actually stay in that room for 5 minutes, you get a call from Toriel telling you to keep waiting. Afterwards, if you wait up to 35 minutes, you get constant phone calls from Toriel. She gets her phone stolen by the annoying dog, and if you leave the room, she explains what happened to her phone to you, unlike the usual dialogue you get. The minor touches in this game just astound me. Origin of Megalovania Before Undertale, Toby Fox, as an angsty teenager, created the Halloween Earthbound hack in 2009, which had Dr. Andonuts as the final boss. Megalovania debuted as Andonuts' theme, and later it was remixed in Homestuck in a fight sequence named S. Wake and later released in Homestuck's 6th album, Air Transparent, in 2011. The song later was rearranged again in Undertale, where it's famously used in Sansa's boss fight. Doge. There is no meme! Take off your clothes! <laughs> no, not that fucking Doge. Doge is a cut enemy that was another bipedal dog character that wields a spear. Her attacks were identical to lesser dogs, but her sparry method was a little different. Toby states in the Undertale art book that she was cut for being too detailed compared to the other enemies. Royal Guard 3 and Royal Guard 4 Royal Guard 3 and Royal Guard 4 are a pair of cut enemies that are similar to Royal Guard 1 and 2, and follow a similar battle. It's likely this fight was cut as it was too similar to Royal Guard 1 and Royal Guard 2 and would have just been seen as repetitive. Glide Glide is a boss hidden in Snowden. Like So Sorry, it was a character that was implemented due to a Kickstarter backer. In order to encounter it, you must enter the mysterious door and, in the room it leads to, move for two minutes straight. Not much to really say about it. Toby beat Sakurai in Smash. In the same video presentation where the Sans costume was revealed, Sakurai stated that Toby Fox arrived at his house and challenged him to Smash, and that if Toby won, he would be able to include whoever he wanted as a Mii costume which is the most unbelievable story I've ever heard, but I believe it 100%. For real though, imagine fighting Sakurai and literally beating him at his own game. Don't rip Sprite's message. In the game's files, there's a message amongst some sprite sheets that says, please don't upload these huge sprite sheets online. Just cause most weird things here are used, I'd rather them be seen in context first. Wait like a year first. If you're just ripping normally seen sprites for Spriter's resource or something, I don't care if you use these to make it easier though. Snowball Golf and Human Souls Connection There's an optional minigame in Snowden where you can push a ball into a hole. Depending on how you play, a certain colored flag appears from the hole and tells you how you played. If you get the ball into the hole in 6 seconds on your first try, the flag will state this. Bravery, Justice, Integrity, Kindness, Perseverance, Patience. Using these, you are able to win at ball game. The colors for each of the adjectives are the same as the six human souls, so this has led people to speculate that these colors refer to the personalities of each of the human souls. Sans Patrick Connection It was discovered in 2019 that Sans' voice clip is actually a sample of Patrick from the Spongebob episode Something Smells. Here, take a listen. Maybe it's the way you're dressed. Maybe it may, 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 may. Soon after this, the clip was memed to shit, especially since it was on the tail end of Sansa's reveal in Smash. Title Anagram Undertale is an anagram for Deltarune, which can reference the fact that Deltarune takes place in a world similar to Undertale, but things have been switched around. Or if you're a memer, Undertale can be an anagram for... Nut Dealer. Clam Girl. If your fun value is between 80 and 89, an NPC can spawn in Waterfall named Clam Girl. If you talk to her, she talks about her neighbor's daughter Susie and how you should meet her. She also says that fate will find a way for you to meet her. Interestingly, in the version 1.001 patch of Undertale, she has an additional line of dialogue that says, in life's grand scheme, she might be why you came here in the first place. Even more interestingly, talking to Clam Girl in this patch makes the Don't Forget note appear in Sansa's lab. More on that later. House and Snowden's background. 
If you look to the left of Snowden's mysterious door, there's a house in the background with lit windows. You can even see someone leave and re-enter the house. Quiche Origin In 2013, Toby Fox tweeted out, There's an abandoned quiche under the bench here. Steven after not surviving. But what if Sans wasn't Ness? Or even Patrick? What if he was... Steven Universe? Clearly not, because this is a shitpost theory purely made to make fun of theories like Matt Pat's. In this theory, it's proposed that Steven Universe contracted cancer, lost his hair, and wore a sweatshirt to stay warm. Eventually, he dies and turns into a skeleton, and lives on his new form with the name Sans, which stands for Steven After Not Surviving. Like if you cry every time. JoJo References when fighting the Mad Dummy, expect to see a few references to JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Alongside their habit of repeating the same word three times in a row, Mad Dummy also says, FUTILE! 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 Yes, this is a reference to JoJo, as Antagonist Dio's rapid punch battle cry of MUDA 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 directly translates to FUTILE, or more commonly, USELESS. Mad Dummy also has a segment where they throw a single knife at Frisk, and comments that they are out of knives. Dio also uses knives in his climactic battle with Jotaro and Stardust Crusaders, throwing them in stopped time. A lesser known JoJo reference is with the punch card item from the Nice Cream Guy, which, when used, displays the flavor text, Hurrah! You ripped up the punch card! Your hands are burning! This directly references Jotaro's rapid punch battle cry of, Ora, Ora, Ora! Sound check. If your fun value is at 65, you can go to the Snowden room that has a fishing rod in it. It has a 50% chance of having you access a sound test room. You can only listen to four unused songs. Happy Town, Meat Factory, Trouble Dingle, and lastly, Gaster's Theme. If you choose Gaster's Theme, you can't pick any of the other songs anymore. After listening to the song, the game says, Thanks for your feedback, be seeing you soon, before booting you out of the sound test. Inside Fan Gamer Plushies. If you cut into the Undertale plushies, you can find something hidden in each of them. Inside Toriel, you find a Monster Soul plush. Inside Papyrus, you find the annoying dog with a bone. Inside Sans, you find red cotton representing his blood. Inside Temmy, you find Temmy flakes. Inside Napstablook, you find a ghost sandwich. And inside Rao's eye, you find a crayon drawing made by him. I think this type of, like, physical easter eggs is really creative, and really shows how out-of-the-box Fangamer and Toby really think. Don't you have anything better to do? During the epilogue, if you go back to the beginning flower bed you first appeared at, you can talk to Azriel. After exchanging a long bit of dialogue to Frisk, if you try to talk to Azriel again, he says, Don't you have anything better to do? If you also beat Undertale's neutral route multiple times in a row, Flowey will appear at the end to get some dialogue. After six times of doing this again and again, he also says, Don't you have anything better to do? Gaster is the Bone Brothers' father. This is a massive fan theory that is almost considered fact at this point. There is a lot to back up this theory, so let's take it one step at a time. First off, Gaster's appearance is very skeleton with black voids for eyes and a white face and hands. Second, he's the only character besides Sans and Papyrus to not only be named after a font, with WD standing for Wingdings, but also use a different font when speaking. Remember Sans' lab? Well, what if the unreadable symbols on the blueprints are actually Wingdings? And remember the photo of Sans with someone you don't recognize? What if that's Gaster? When he talked to the Snowden shopkeeper, she says that Sans and Papyrus simply showed up one day. Consider the idea that Gaster is their father. When Gaster disappeared and scattered across time and space, it would make sense that Sans and Papyrus would seemingly appear out of nowhere, as Gaster is no longer there as their father. And lastly, during Sans's fight in Genocide, he has an attack where he fires lasers at you with skulls. In the files, these skulls are named Gaster Blasters. So either Gaster made these blasters, or they're related to him in some other way. What do you two think? This is the last line in Entry 17, which is easily the most speculated upon. The theory is that you two refers to Sans and Papyrus, or possibly Sans and Alphys, as those two are the leading scientists in the underground. 98 Robot 
There's an unused NPC that was meant to appear in Hotland. It's a tiny robot with no arms and the number 98 on its chest. It's unknown why this character was cut, but most likely because Metaton is the star of the show in Hotland, and having another robot character would be somewhat confusing. Hacker Ending By hacking the game in certain ways, or the game experiences some sort of critical bug, the ending phone call you'll get is from Sans, who tells you that his phone call is an error handling message, and you should tell the creator of the game about it. He then says, you're just a dirty hacker, aren't you? Yeah, get out of here. Papyrus is holding back. Even during Genocide Route, where the protagonist is clearly dangerous, Papyrus will not kill you. In fact, his stats are massively lower compared to a normal fight with him. But also consider his brother, Sans. Sans has the lowest attack in the game, and Papyrus is supposedly 20 times stronger than him. Is he not using his power to its fullest potential? Toho Inspiration Toby Fox is a massive Toho fan, and even had an OC named Apple Girlington that he wrote songs for. It's quite obvious that Undertale's bullet hell elements are lifted from Toho, but there are many more inspirations. Some of the music in the game is inspired by Toho, but Spear of Justice sticks out the most, particularly the trumpet section, which is a common instrument in Toho music. Azrael Dreamer in his God of Hyperdeath form is also particularly inspired by Marisa, as they share a rainbow and stars aesthetic. Sort of unrelated, but in 2018, Toby tweeted that he got to meet Zune and talked over a few beers. Toby really did achieve a lot of life goals, didn't he? Tem out of Tem. In the check description for Temmy, it simply says, Rated Tem out of Tem, instead of her attack and defense. Interestingly, this was added in version 1.001. That was Layer 2. We're getting into more and more obscure information now, and you might not have known everything on this layer. The further down we go, the more mysterious it gets, so prepare yourself. Let's go even deeper. Flowey Stalking If you backtrack after important events in the game, there's a chance you can spot Flowey going into the ground. This heavily implies that Flowey is stalking you throughout the game, which would explain his sudden appearance at the end of any route. There's also another easter egg that correlates with this one. In the final Echo Flower field in Waterfall, if you nearly exit then backtrack and listen to one of the first Echo Flowers again, you get new dialogue. If you spare Toriel, you hear, Where oh where could that child be? I've been looking all over for them. <laughs> That's not true. She'll find another kid, and instantly forget about you. You'll never see her again. If you kill Toriel, you hear, Where am I? It's so cold here. It's so dark. Someone help me. Anyone, please, help me. But nobody came. And on a genocide route, the Echo Flower remained silent. Chara buried under flower bed. It's said that after Chara died, Asgore put them in a coffin in the basement of New Home, but Toriel took Chara's body to give them a proper burial in the ruins. The backstory states that Chara wanted to see the golden flowers on the surface before their death. If we rewind back to the beginning of the game, what do we see? A bed of golden flowers. To further add on to this, keep in mind that in Genocide, Chara states that Frisk's power awoke them from death. If we assume the flower bed is their grave, Frisk falling onto said flower bed would probably cause them to awake. Later on, when you fall off the bridge in Waterfall due to Undyne, you enter a flashback and hear Azrael's voice. And when you wake up, you're on a bed of golden flowers. And the last bit of evidence is that at the epilogue, where is Azrael? Looking over the golden flower bed at the beginning of the game, saying, someone has to take care of these flowers. Nightmare. Normally, the monster kid's word search looks like this. However, when the fun value is set to either 56 or 57, it looks like this. Weird. Fallen Down Monsters This term is used in Alphys' True Lab entries when referring to monsters who are close to death. In an unused line, the term Fallen Down is fully explained in a book titled Monster History Part 6. Unfortunately, monsters are not experienced with illness. However, when monsters are about to expire of age, they lie down, immobile, 
We call this state Fallen Down. A person who has fallen down will soon perish. Asgore also refers to this term in the Undertale alarm clock when talking about Rudy, saying Rudy eventually fell down. Strange Tweets Toby Fox has made a lot of weird tweets before, a lot of them being funny and some of them being cryptic. One thread of tweets in particular had Toby state, The success of Undertale has been incredible. Thank you to the artists, the fans, and to my friends for supporting me in 2015. But lately, something has left me feeling unsettled. A burning, inexplicable feeling. You could say, its very nature is shrouded in darkness. On October 30th, 2018, the official Undertale Twitter account appeared to be hijacked. The new person behind the account tweeted as such. Welcome. Have you been looking for me? How wonderful. I have been looking for you as well. I have something. Something I want to show you. Something I think you will find very, very interesting. But it is not complete. Yet. No. It is far from complete. Thus, I have a small favor to ask of you. Return here in 24 hours. At that time, I will ask you a few questions. Then, using your responses, we will approach its realization. Thank you very much for your time. I will be in contact again. Soon. The next day, this person, presumed to be Gaster, posted some more tweets, with their final tweet being a link to Deltarune.com, which included a download link to Deltarune. I remember the day leading up to this, the entire fandom was shaken up so fucking hard. Practically everyone who played Undertale that I knew was talking about this, and when the game dropped, I was so fucking hyped and full of chills. It was such a great way to release Deltarune. Starman Reference On the chest of Papyrus' armor is a symbol that's also on the chest of Starman from Earthbound, also linking the game back to Earthbound. Susie is Susie. Linking back to Clam Girl, if you talk to her in the Nintendo Switch version of the game, she says that you haven't met Susie yet, and she says the time to meet her is fast approaching before she turns grayscale and disappears. Keep in mind, this was the last big set of Undertale content before we got Deltarune, where one of the most prominent characters is named Susie. Different spelling, but pretty much the same pronunciation. And if you remember, talking to Clam Girl about Susie makes the Don't Forget note appear in Sansa's lab, which is highly thought to be linked to Deltarune. This, and the message Clam Girl gives of your time to meet Susie Bean fast approaching right before the release of Deltarune, it's highly possible that Susie is Susie. Flowey is a metaphor for the player. Flowey tells Frisk that, before they fell underground, he also had the ability to save and reset. He first used this ability for good, but he eventually became bored and started abusing this power for his own selfish needs, or for fun, just to see what would happen if he toyed with or killed people. If this sounds at all familiar, this is what happens not only in Undertale, but in games outside of it as well. Anyone who's played an Elder Scrolls game has quick saved, then slaughtered an entire village just for the hell of it. This happens with most games, where becoming bored leads to you trying everything in the game just to squeeze every bit of content out of it, even if it means making decisions that would otherwise lead to a bad or selfish ending. 700 Club The 700 Club is a talk show on the Christian Broadcasting Network that first aired in 1966, which talks about news, interviews guests, and seeks to spread the word of Christianity. Now what the fuck does this have to do with Undertale? Well, in 2015, uh, this happened. All right, it's time for some questions. We've been running out of time on the show, but uh, what do well, you let's got? Let's bring it on with Peyton, oh, first of all, today. Pat, Peyton says, recently I was looking through my daughter's phone and I found many pictures of a cartoon skeleton with one glowing blue eye and wearing a hoodie. When I asked my daughter why she had such demonic images on her phone, she told me there was nothing wrong with it because it was from a video game. How do I help my daughter not be attracted to such demonic things? <laughs> well, give her something better. Uh, I think it's a fad. I, you know, the, these funny looking things, I, I, I think I would make a big deal of it. I think if you do, you magnify the... You drive the, her to it. Yeah, you drive her to it. And uh, if you got something more wholesome that she can enjoy, 
provided for. You must have something. There's got to be some video game that isn't so evil, but those, those things are filled with violence. I mean, you know, and, and brutality is unreal. And that's what the kids are playing. You say, oh, well, he's just playing a video game. Yeah, sure. Boom, boom, boom. Well, sometimes it's all about being cool with your friends because well, exactly. they all have it, I you know. know. <laughs> so, yeah, why not? Okay. okay. When I first saw this image on the Undertale subreddit when it was first posted, I honestly thought it was just a meme. But only recently did I learn this was actually real. Toby Answer in Metaton Essay When Metaton gives you an essay to fill out, if you write Toby at any point, he says, Toby? What the hell's that? Sounds... sexy. I mean... I'm inclined to agree. <laughs> Azrael Anagram. Near the end of Deltarune, it's revealed that Ralzai is actually Azrael. However, if you were looking for small details, you would realize that Ralzai is an anagram for Azrael. However, there's also a much darker anagram of Azrael's name. The name Azrael Dreamer can be an anagram for Serial Murderer. And considering what he does is flowey, that sounds about right. Star.OGG This is an unused song that uses instruments from the original Star Fox for the SNES. I'll play the song for you now. McDonald's Connection. The sound Omega Flowey makes when he's hurt is actually a sampled sound effect from a McDonald's commercial, specifically a sound from Ronald McDonald. Oh. Oh. You sure can get a lot in these bags. Catch you. Catch. Flowey's famous voice clip, Oh, that's a wonderful idea, also comes from the same commercial. I mean, both Flowey and Ronald McDonald are demons of evil, so it makes sense that Toby drew inspiration from Ronald. Punch Card Exploit The Punch Card Exploit is a glitch that is used in speedruns of Undertale to speed up gameplay. The glitch is a little complicated to explain, but I'll try to explain it as best I can. Whenever you're in a cutscene or talking to an NPC, you normally cannot move. But by allowing the punch card item to appear during this, the game thinks you should be able to move, so it allows you to do so, allowing you to move while normally you have to sit through dialogue. The punch card can also be used to wrong warp you to a spot you originally were by entering through doors. I hope I explained this right, but if not, there's a video in the description that explains this much better than I can. Room Water Redacted Room Water Redacted, or Room 272, is an unused room. In the center is a strange figure, and if you try to talk to it, it says Redacted in lowercase wingdings. If you try to leave the room, you're sent to the sound test room. Some people speculate that this character is the true form of Gaster, but nothing really backs this up. The Stable There's a string of text in the game that indicates that a horse stable was meant to be included at Napstabluk's snail farm. The text proceeds as follows. It's a horse stable. Do you want to go inside? You jostle the door. It's locked. Suddenly, from inside the redacted, you hear a... And that's it. Further investigation into the code reveals that you're meant to look in a trash can to find a key to open the stable. If you do so and interact with the stable again, the same character from Room Water Redacted appears, and it simply says X in wingdings. Very weird cut event. R slash Underminers R slash Underminers is a subreddit dedicated to data mining Undertale and Deltarune, and talking about the discoveries within each game. Massive shoutouts to everyone who has dug up weird mysteries from the game's code in here, as a lot of stuff involving Gaster and the like has come from here, so 
big shoutouts to them. Unused Sansa's blue eye in Smash. It was found that in Sansa's texture in Smash Ultimate, there's an unused section of blue around the eyes, which is obviously meant to be Sansa's blue eye in his boss fight. It's unknown as to why this was cut or what it would have been used for, but people speculate it would have been used for his parry animation, which honestly would have been super badass. Room Overworld Room Overworld, or Room 274, is a pitch black room with red pillars with small faces on them. Attempting to talk to these NPCs crashes the game. The player can activate two dialogue triggers though. One of them is for Toriel, where her dialogue is the exact same as when she first talks to you in the ruins, and the other dialogue trigger activates a fight with Flowey, where he says dialogue from a neutral route ending while music plays. If I had to guess, this was most likely a test room. I know what you did. If you look in the trash can of Alphys' lab, you can see this bit of flavor text. There's a message crumpled up in the trash can. It's in a strange kind of handwriting. It says, I know what you did. It's possible this note was written by Flowey, as this message seems to be directed towards Alphys herself for her experiments in the True Lab. Flowey is certainly the type to mock and remind Alphys of her fatal mistakes, much like he does for the player in their mistakes. Sans isn't a skeleton. No, this isn't a meme theory explaining that Sans is Phil Swift or whatever. Yo, what's up, Flex fans? We're gonna check out the new green screen. It's awesome. I think you're gonna love it. What? This is an actual theory with actual evidence that Sans isn't a skeleton, but in fact, a darkener. The whole post goes into a lot more detail, but I'll summarize it quickly. Sans bleeding at the end of his boss fight made no sense, unless you believe it was ketchup. But let's just assume it's blood for a minute. How could Sans bleed if he's a monster? Simple, he's a darkener, and darkeners can bleed. On top of this, the doors in Deltarune have the same fire underneath them as the door to Sans' room, and Papyrus has described that room as another world. This would also explain how Sans can use shortcuts to get around quickly. He's simply using the Dark World as a way to move around. And if he remembers the Sans' lab entry and what was on there, the connections become more and more concrete. There is much, much more to this theory, but I recommend you look in the description for the full posts. All Camera Locations It's discovered when you meet Alphys that she was watching you throughout the entire underground and examining your journey. This must mean there's cameras everywhere, right? But where are they? Well, if you check specific sections in the game, you can find text that states that a camera is hidden there. From my research, these are all the locations for the cameras. One in a bush, just outside of the ruins. One in Papyrus' sentry post. One behind Lesser Dog's post. One in a tree. One beneath the first step of Papyrus' bridge. One underneath the last step of the same bridge. One hidden in Snowden Town's trees. And lastly, there's one behind a waterfall in Waterfall. There might be more, but these are all the ones I could find. Game Theory Beef Oh ho oh, oh boy, get your Keemstar popcorn bowls out for this one. Game Theory has a secondary channel named GT Live, where they play games on live streams. One game they played on a stream was a demo named Heartbound. When GT Live played it, they clickbaited the title and tags about Undertale instead of respecting the game as an original work for views, and didn't bother to link back to the original Heartbound game in the description. When the creator called them out for this, MatPad replied to this with, I shit you not, this opener. I'm sorry to hear you're disappointed in our recent playthrough of Heartbound, but what you see as disrespectful, I would argue is the opposite. Let me explain. After Matt Pat tried to backpedal and shittily explain himself out of the situation, Toby Fox himself replied and said this, You should link to any game you play. Creators need all the help they can get. And think carefully if you're misleading your audience with how you present your videos. You went too far this time. This is the only time Toby Fox has ever gotten serious and called out someone like this, and it's one of the biggest oh shit moments in the Undertale fandom, I'd say. Good on you, Toby, and fuck you, Matt Pat. Deltarune worked on before Undertale. Toby Fox got inspired to work on an RPG in 2012, mostly thanks to the artist Kenotines, I hope I pronounced that right, who designed Lancer, Rudin, Clover, Haffy, King, and Jevil, and posted art of them to her Tumblr blog. The designs were meant for a class project and depict the aforementioned characters on 52 playing cards. 
While Toby Fox made Undertale first, his original idea was always meant to be Deltarune, based on these playing cards. Grandpa Semi There's an unused sound file named GrandpaSemi.ogg from the Korean demo of Undertale, which is a bit crushed version of Metal Crusher's opening notes. I'll play it for you now. The file name is speculated to refer to a cut character named Grandpa Semi, who could have been related to Sansa Papyrus, as Semi could refer to the font Semi Serif. Now here's a very cool theory about this character. What if Gaster is inspired by this character being cut? Think about it. A potential father figure for Sansa Papyrus has lore that says he's literally been erased from existence. And then think about what happened to Grandpa Semi. Undertale content and Halloween hack. The obvious similarity between the two games is the fact Megalovania is used, but this runs a little deeper. One of the flowers in Magicant says it was used in an experiment from Dr. Andonuts. Sound familiar? And when you die in the fight against Dr. Andonuts, he taunts you and says you're just dreaming before laughing at you. The same thing happens against Omega Flowey, but the game crashes instead. There are also enemies you can encounter in the game straight up named Amalgamate. And lastly, right before you fight Dr. Andonuts, his sprite appears as Yuboa from the game Yumi Nikki. And people say the way this sprite is constructed could have inspired Gaster. Papyrus survives his death. To be honest, this is the only entry I couldn't find much information for. There's obviously fan works that say Papyrus survives his death, or Sans prevents his death in some way, but there's nothing to really indicate this within canon. If anyone knows anything about this, please tell me in the comments. And that's Layer 3. This is the point of no return. There were entries here that even I didn't know about, but it's only going to get worse from here. Into the fathoms we go. Undertale Art Book. I'm not too sure why this is so far down, but on the Fangamer website, you can buy the Undertale Art Book. It shows a lot of concept art, early design, random sketches, stuff like that, with commentary from Toby Fox. It's a really good read. I got the physical copy because I'm weird like that. Collector's Edition Songs. In the Collector's Edition of Undertale, there's a CD with all the game's music on it, but it also includes bonus tracks. In the description, you'll find a video that plays all of these songs. Here are the song names. Mysterious Shrine, Overly Familiar Shrine, both of which are used in the Dog Shrine rooms in the Nintendo Switch version, Dating Start FM version, Bereavement, which appears to be an early version of Asgore, Bone Trestle trailer version, which is the song used in Undertale's trailer, Dog Dating, and finally, Before the Story, which is actually used in Deltarune, that being the song that plays on the title screen pink names. One of the froggets you can talk to in ruins can completely change one factor of the game. It says this, Surely you know by now a monster wears a yellow name when you can spare it. What do you think of that? Very helpful or it's bad? If you choose it's bad, it says, Really? Then I'll tell all my friends to tell their friends' friends. Never use yellow names. How about that? Then you can choose to either keep or remove yellow names from the game. By removing yellow names, the enemy's name won't change colors at all, making it a bit harder to know if the enemy can be spared or not. If you complete the game without these names and go back to Froggit, it says, How was your adventure? It must have been difficult without being able to tell the enemy's feelings. However, if you remove yellow names and decide to talk to Froggit again, you can tell it to bring back the yellow names. The Froggit says, How are you doing without yellow names? It's great, or bring them back. If you choose bring them back, it says, Huh? It's rather inconvenient that you changed your mind like this. Since I told everyone not to use yellow names, everyone threw theirs out. Well, last year it was fashionable to have pink names. I think everyone still has those in their closet somewhere. I'll ask everyone to look, but this is the last time. After this, whenever the enemy can be spared, the enemy's name will change to pink instead of yellow. One last fun fact about this. After you tell the Froggit to throw away yellow names, by looking at the trash heaps in Waterfall, you can read this. There's a pile of yellow names in the trash pile. 
Unused Metaton Neo Attacks. It's found that Metaton Neo has some unused attacks in the game's files. But don't get too excited, the attacks appear to be reused from Vulcan. It's possible that Metaton Neo was planned to be a full boss fight instead of the instant kill you deal to him in Genocide. Metaton Unused Audio There's an unused audio clip in the game that was meant to be used by Metaton. I'll play it for you now. The sound clip is sampled from the Simpsons episode, Team Homer, where Homer says this. <laughs> God boy couldn't get a strike! <laughs> God, imagine Homer's voice coming out of stupid, sexy Metaton of all people. A raise. In a 2017 Famitsu interview with Toby Fox, Toby says this as the inspiration to start developing Undertale. In December 2012, when I was in my third year at university, I was browsing Wikipedia and found an article about array data types. At that time, I had no knowledge of data types, but after reading the article, I realized that I could make some kind of game with this. So I first programmed a system to display text and then used it to create a combat system. And while I was making the battle system, I felt that various ideas for stories that could be told using the system came up. After that, I started looking for an artist, but I found Temi Chang's blog and asked her straightforwardly, why don't you make a game with me? I had never spoken to or knew Temi, but when she said yes, that changed my future altogether. I am very grateful for Temi. The demo version was completed in early 2013 and launched the Kickstarter project. The rest is, as you know. Easy to change, huh? If you edit your name to be longer than six letters, whenever you open the menu, the text, easy to change, huh, will appear next to your name. <laughs> Gotta love Toby and his cheeky ways of calling out the player. Ultimate Fate of Hard Mode This entry is basically stating what was said before. Hard Mode will likely never happen. Gaster Stats Within the game's files, WD Gaster has actual stats, which are listed as 66,666 HP, 66,666 attack, and 66,666 defense. Whoa, that was a mouthful. And if you're able to beat him in battle, you would actually get negative gold and negative XP. A note from your friend. When you download the Undertale demo, it also comes with an instruction manual, which is both Flowey and Toriel explaining the basics of the game. The very last page of the manual is titled, A Note From Your Friend, with Flowey in the center saying, Howdy, my name's Flowey. I'm really looking forward to meeting you. I already feel like we're good friends. He he he. Whenever you complete the demo, the manual will change depending on your actions. If you kill Toriel, the last page will change to Flowey grinning with the text, Ha ha ha. You'd even try to spare her, you murderer. If you spare Toriel, Flowey's absent, and the page says, don't get too cocky. If you start a genocide route during the demo, all of the pages except the first and last are changed to the Undertale logo and the text, that was fun, let's finish the job. The final page now depicts a faceless Flowey. Big Bob. To quote the cutting room floor, nothing is known about this image, aside from the fact that it's Big Bob. In all seriousness, it's likely this was just a test sprite that was given a silly name. Original Entry 17 We all know about Gaster's Entry 17, but there is another Entry 17 written by Alphys, which is normally inaccessible in the game. It reads as, Monsters' physical forms can't handle determination like humans can. With too much determination, our bodies begin to break down. Everyone's melted together. Asgore knows about timelines. During Asgore's fight, you can use Act to talk to him, and certain flavor text states, You tell Asgore he's killed you a number of times before. He nods sadly. This seems to imply that Asgore knows about timelines, but this isn't stated anywhere else in the game. Asgore doesn't even make any hints to this, or even talks about it beyond the short interaction. It's possible Asgore doesn't fully know what Frisk is talking about when they say this, but it's left weirdly vague. How'd you do that? If you attack Temi and get her to low health, the narrator says, How'd you do that? Considering Temi's defense is negative 20, nearly any attack will kill Temi in one shot. Not many players will find this dialogue because of that, and it seemingly surprises even the narrator when you don't kill her. Heartache was Jevil's theme originally. 
In a Japanese interview on Nintendo's website, Toby had this to say about the development of Deltarune. In 2011, when I was living away from home while I was in college, I had a flashy illness. I couldn't get any medicine, and when I was sleeping with a high fever, I had a very vivid dream. It was a dream of the ending of the game, and since then I've been obsessed with the idea that I have to make that the ending of the game. So I tried to make it once in 2012. I really liked the artist Canotines I found on Tumblr, and I used that person's character design. But at that time, I ended up giving up development without completing a single room. However, some of the songs I made at that time became the background music of Undertale. For example, the song Heartache was originally titled Joker Battle, and Bone Trussle was intended to be the main theme of the game. And when Kickstarter brought in investment for Undertale in 2013, I said to myself if Undertale could be completed, the next game would be a mix of Undertale and that dream concept I decided. Not only does this give more info about what Deltarune originally was earlier in the iceberg, the title Joker Battle could give a hint that a heartache was originally intended for Jevil, as, you know, he suggested. What the fuck is wrong? Within the code for the scene where Metaton sings to Frisk, you can find Toby getting a little frustrated with coding the game. Naps to Bluke is invincible. This entry refers to the fact that, even during Genocide, Napstablu cannot be killed by the player. This is attributed to the fact Napstablu is non-corporeal, aka, they're a ghost without a host, like Mad Mew Mew or Metaton, who can both take damage. When you talk to Napstablu during the True Pacifist epilogue, they mention that a flash of light wanted to come in, but they just closed the blinds. This meant Napstablu was not absorbed by Azrael when he became the god of hyperdeath. Whether this is because Blukey is invincible, or because they didn't let the light into their house is up for debate. Early Burnt Pan There's a weird glitch you can perform in Hotland, and I'm not entirely sure how it works. Basically, during Genocide Route, if you interact with the bag of dog food and activate Metaton's dialogue at the same time, you're able to check for instant noodles twice before it tells you you can pick up the Burnt Pan, getting it a little bit earlier than intended. The Cauldron of Hell In the genocide fight against the royal guards, checking them gives this flavor text. I see two lovers staring over the edge of the Cauldron of Hell. Do they both wish for death? This means their love will end in hell. I couldn't stop laughing. This is a quote from the book Kitchen by Banana Yoshimoto, and apparently the book is about death and overcoming grief. Very fitting. Brandish inspiration. Toby states in the Undertale art book that the video game series Brandish inspired some of Undertale. The most prominent example of this inspiration is with Megalovania, as the song is heavily inspired by the song Gatto Badorer in the game Brandish 2, the Planet Buster. Here, take a listen. Another thing to note is that, in the Undertale Halloween hack, you play as Varric, who is the protagonist of Brandish. And even later, it's possible that Varric inspired the design of Chris in Deltarune. I mean, just look at the similarities. Cucumber Quest Cucumber Quest is a webcomic written and illustrated by GGDG. Apparently, GG and Toby are good friends with each other. Toby Fox once composed a theme for the character Noise Master, and a specific melody in the song would later become reused for Metal Crusher. Here, take a listen. Chara Buried Under Tree An alternate theory as to where Chara is buried is underneath the tree in the ruins. The narrator states that every time this old tree grows leaves, they fall right off. While seemingly everything in Undertale has some sort of connection or obvious meaning, this tree doesn't have that, unless we assume that Chara was buried underneath here. 
Considering their abusive behavior and later revealing their true intentions to murder every monster in the underground to destroy the world, a tree that seemingly continues to die would be a very fitting place for Chara. At Fog Radiation. Fog Radiation was Toby's old Twitter handle and his original username on Starman.net. Not much else to really say. Bepis. Bepis is an in joke with the creators of Undertale. <laughs> and is a and is a euphemism for penis. For examples of this within the game, the don't rip sprites message mentioned earlier was later replaced with this. You know what I hate? That's Bepis. The taste, the smell, the texture. Hey, you're trilling. <laughs> And also within the game's code are some of these messages. Bepis. <laughs> Do robots dream of electric sex? <laughs> Big queen or so. <laughs> Ultimate Bepis. Capital Weenus Mary. <laughs> Bepis. Big boater down the lane! <laughs> Undertale Halloween hack. While this doesn't really exist and is one of the only joke entries on this iceberg, there's a SoundCloud page for a theoretical Undertale Halloween hack, so I'll link it in the description. Censored Tarot Cards. On the Fangamer website are a set of tarot cards based on Undertale that you can buy. However, this version of the tarot cards are slightly different than the original designs. Tumblr artist Dog Bomber is the one behind the tarot cards, and he posted all of the cards he drew for the card deck. Three of these stick out, though. Frisk is renamed to The Human, the amalgamates on Alphys' card are heavily darkened in the final design, and Gaster was removed entirely. Now, I don't entirely understand why Frisk and Alphys' designs were changed, as the rest of the card deck contains massive spoilers for the game anyway, but let's talk about Gaster. I remember some people were raising an eyebrow at Gaster's card when it was first revealed, as it straight up confirmed that, yes, the sprite named Mystery Man is intended to be Gaster. Right? Well, this has led me to two possible theories as to why the Gaster card was cut. One. Toby doesn't want the answer to be revealed with merch. That'd be kinda lame, right? One of the game's biggest questions answered by a tarot card. And besides, Toby has stated himself that he wants the game's answers to be within the game itself and nothing outside of it. Specifically saying, if it's outside the game itself, it's not really appropriate and also a waste of time. My other theory is that the Gaster card being removed symbolizes Gaster being removed from Undertale. I mean, it's kind of funny, don't you think? The Gaster card basically doesn't exist, just like Gaster, who is a monster that doesn't exist. So maybe this was intentionally done by Toby to troll us just a little bit. And that was the fourth layer. The next layer is the final layer, the most obscure information about this game that almost nobody knows about. Let's go to the bottom of the iceberg. Official Comics in Undertale's Kickstarter, the last stretch goal was Undertale, Extra Comics, and possibly another game. The second has happened, but not the first. Considering the Undertale Clock app, another Kickstarter stretch goal, was cancelled, it's possible this was the fate of the comics as well, as we have heard no mention of them since the Kickstarter. Giftrot and Omega Flowey Connection Let's compare Giftrot and Omega Flowey for a second, and look at how weirdly similar they look. The mouth and placement of the eyes are the details that stand out, but the antlers can be seen as the arms, and even the weird sticker-looking detail on Giftrot's forehead can be seen as the TV screen on Omega Flowey. The credits list Giftrot's designer as Magnolia Porter, with Toby in parentheses with question marks. If Toby designed Omega Flowey and asked Magnolia to design Giftrot based on Omega Flowey, this would explain that weird crediting. 
However, this connection possibly runs a little deeper. Toby originally planned to foreshadow Omega Flowey even more in the final game. In Waterfall, Toby would have included a sprite named Beast Drawing on one of the walls. However, he cut this, saying that it didn't make sense. Reddit user Carabil Watar proposes a theory. Toby was going to heavily hint at the appearance of Omega Flowey throughout all of Undertale, starting in Snowden and progressing more into Waterfall, but this idea was scrapped, and Giftrot is the only remnants of this idea in the final game. Unused Bridge Seed Behavior There's unused code for the bridge seeds in Waterfall that triggers a text box to appear. I'll play the clip now as it kind of speaks for itself. Strange. Muscles.ogg. The file name for the track Sands is Muscles.ogg. The track was discovered to have been made far before Undertale, as it was originally made for a Homestuck related project in October of 2012 under the name Muscles.mp3. But this project never happened. Bone Trestle and Heartache both planned for cancelled projects. In 2016, Toby tweeted out, When I composed Bone Trussell and Heartache as the battle boss theme for a different game I was working on in 2012, I never expected this. Simple as that. Underbound 2 In an old thread on Starman.net, Toby Fox jokingly replied on one of his friend's posts, saying he was making a sequel to an Earthbound ROM hack named Underbound, named Underbound 2. Neither of these ROM hacks exist. <laughs> Little did anyone know, these screenshots were actually from an early version of Undertale. I'll read Toby's forum post for you now. Bump, because now that Coil Snake exists, I finally feel comfortable making Underbound 2, which is not only a direct sequel to the events in Underbound 1, but also a spiritual sequel to Freebound. I'm using a combination of HDMA and Mode 7 to increase the resolution of the SNES, though at the cost of the color palette. Here's some of the music, using some clever tricks to increase the audio quality, though as a result you'll need to expand your ROM to 256 megabytes. Flowey, a friendly flower. He will help you many times along your journey. Actually the reincarnation of Face from the original Underbound. We're gonna be best friends. Main character, young androgynous person who falls into the underground and must use the powers of love to save the world. Step cousin of Squeezo from the original Underbound. There's no magical planet healing music in the sequel, but something tragic happens to your mom at least. That's all for now. Stay tuned for updates. I'm programming the new battle system in CC script, and boy, things are way easier than they used to be. In the screenshots provided, there's a picture of a fight against two frogets, or test monsters. The act button was named Talk, Mercy was named Spare, and there's an additional button titled Spell, which was actually found in the game's files. Frisk's walk cycle was shown off in a gif, and their brown outline was originally black instead. And lastly, an early unfinished version of Enemy Approaching was posted alongside these images, which is a little different than the one found in the final game. Toby said he was making this game for the SNES, but this is obviously not true, and probably a joke knowing him. OBJ Sandsbox In the demo for Undertale, the file name for the dimensional box is named OBJ Sandsbox. Is it possible that Sans and the Dimensional Box are related in some way? Considering Sans' ability to use shortcuts, this isn't entirely out of the question. Susie is Mad Dummy's daughter. There's not much to really support this theory other than very minor things. Clam Girl talks about her neighbor's daughter being named Susie. It could be assumed that Mad Dummy lives somewhere in Waterfall, so what if Mad Dummy was Clam Girl's neighbor? While it may initially seem weird that a dummy ghost could be related to a lizard, remember this is the same game where a fish and a lizard date, and it's possible a skeleton and a goat date, so anything is fucking possible. One last bit of evidence for this is that the eyes of Susie and Mad Dummy look similar, but honestly that's really it when it comes to this theory as far as I know. Undyne Files in Undertale's demo suggest that Undyne's original name was spelled as Undyne instead. Not much else to really say about it. Papyrus's cool song full version. 
In the Undertale Kickstarter rewards video, Papyrus promises the viewer that if they donate $30 to the Kickstarter, they'll get the game, the game soundtrack, and a song made by him called Papyrus' Cool Song. However, this never came to be, and anyone who donated $30 never got this track. There's a short preview within the video, and that has been recreated, but no full version has ever come out. Gaster Followers Mistake Motif This is an old theory that refers to the living counterparts of the Gaster Followers, and saying that each of them have made a massive mistake or many mistakes, which can parallel Gaster in his fatal mistake. Goner Kid's parallel is Monster Kid, who is a monster who trips over himself a lot and nearly dies by slipping off a bridge. The donut guy bought too expensive of a donut from Muffet, and the orange guy forgot to make a reservation to eat in Metaton's restaurant. The only follower that's a bit of a stretch is the striped bird character. They tell Chris to check out books on the second floor, but they're blocking the second floor, so their mistake is blocking the stairs? Plus, Clam Girl doesn't have that much of a mistake to note of, but still, I really, really like this theory. Level 20 True Pacifist This refers to a strange glitch involving Metaton. If you use the punch card exploit and move forward with it still open, the Metaton fight will still occur. After you kill him and walk out of the room, you can use the punch card to teleport back to the original room, walk out, save, then fight him again. You can grind to level 20 and finish the True Pacifist route normally. Neither of them could fix the machine, no matter how hard they tried. In a now-deleted tweet, Toby Fox said this, You've all seen the happiest outcome. Neither of them could fix the machine, no matter how hard they tried. No one can. It's theorized that the machine refers to the covered-up machine in Sansa's lab, and them could refer to Sansa Papyrus, Sansa and Alphys, or maybe even Sansa and Gaster. Whatever the machine is, it can't be fixed by anyone, according to Toby. If it were to be fixed, it could possibly give an even happier outcome than what we see in the true pacifist route. Maybe it could save Azriel, save Chara, or even bring Gaster back from non-existence? Sans me costume leaked, but nobody took it seriously. I couldn't find much information about this outside of Chi Seatbelt's word, who is the creator of the iceberg, so I'm simply going to repeat what he said about this entry. The story goes that Paragon, an admin for Discord server Forest Maze, heard some inside information about Smash, including that Sans would become a me costume. This led him to believe that Frisk would become a playable character. He told the members about his information, and they all said it was fake. Several other credible insiders also said they heard about Sans too, but didn't necessarily believe in it either. Xbox port. This entry is simply pointing out that Undertale has only come out on PC, Mac, Linux, PS4, PS Vita, and Nintendo Switch. How come there hasn't been an Xbox port yet? Ball on title screen. On Undertale's title screen, if you type ball, you get a short sound clip. And the sound clip's name is Mystery. Fitting. There is literally nothing else to say about this easter egg other than how weird and specific it is. How did anyone even find this easter egg? Flowey kills the evacuated monsters. This theory was proposed on one of Etika's streams of the genocide route. Rest in peace. The theory goes that Flowey helps the player in performing the genocide of the underground by picking off any monsters you don't kill and the monsters that try to escape. This theory doesn't have much proof behind it, but it's food for thought. Game Test 7 This is a supposed beta version of Undertale that has never been released to the public. What this beta version of the game could include is purely a mystery. Mount Ebot Real Life Location Hey, if you got to this point in the video, let me just say thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. This video had a fuck ton of effort and research put into it, and if you liked it, please share it around with your friends and other people who you think will like it. And if you want, look around the rest of my channel. This type of video is very different and not something I'm used to making, so if you don't like my other content, that's fine. I simply wanted to make a big video like this one about one of my favorite games ever. 
Look in the description to see a big doc of all the videos used in this video, along with some other sources. One last side note, if this video gets really popular and people want more, I might make a sequel video, as there's definitely more content hidden in this game. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great tomorrow. See you later.